Hi everybody, if you've been looking for more features in Lists and Planner to manage your tasks, I'm gonna introduce you to a new tool, Project for the Web, that has the same feeling as those tools, but provides way more features. So today, I'm gonna to go through creating a new project, assigning users, how notifications work, all for this new tool, Project for the Web. So there's a spectrum of project management tools available to you. Things like Planner and Lists, which are really good for small teams that just need to track tasks throughout their life cycle, all the way up to things like Project Online, which is an enterprise tool that can manage pro multiple projects across an organization. Microsoft recently released Project for the Web, which has some of the features of Project Online, so more enterprise project management features, but is super accessible to end users and can be used by small teams if needed. It has features like grid view, so listing out each task in a grid, timeline, so you can see all of your tasks uh, from start to finish, dependencies, so you can have some, de some one task start after another task ends, scheduling, and roadmaps. If you're looking for resource management, financial management, or maybe critical path analysis, those are things that you're gonna wanna stick with Project Online or Project for the... Too many freaking projects. Project Online or Project Desktop, that's what I was trying to say. So let's get some things out of the way. This is a different product than Office 365. It requires an additional license. Honestly, Microsoft licensing around this is confusing. Uh, the bottom line is you've got like plan one, plan two, plan three. This is in the middle. It's like plan two is what you need in order to get started with this. And you've got to purchase that for everyone who's going to be uh, interacting with us on a regular basis. So creating tasks and creating projects. Uh, anybody who is not creating tasks can just use the Office 365 license. So Office 365 has a basic access to it. So now that we got that out of the way, let's get into it. How do you create a project? Where do you go to use this? So really what you have to do is go to project.microsoft.com or if you're in any of the Office 365 apps, you're gonna be able to go into your waffle and there's gonna be an option for project. So one option is go to the waffle, find projects, click on it. The other is go to project.microsoft.com. So now that we're on the homepage for Project for the Web, you can see that we've got a new project button and we've got our list of projects. And I've got a few that are out here already. We're gonna create a brand new one. When you go to create a brand new one, you have several different options. You can create a blank project. That's gonna be very bare bones and you're gonna to have to set up everything, all your tasks from scratch, which is totally fine. I'm gonna choose simple project. So what that's gonna do is uh, this template is just going to bring in a few very basic tasks for me automatically that I can get started with. So really quickly, it came right up. We've got all of my tasks listed um, and I've got, uh, as you can see, we've got summary tasks. So these aren't actually tasks, they're just summary items. And then we've got tasks down below, which have name and who it's assigned to, duration, labels. Um, and basically I can, from this screen, create tasks, edit tasks, move tasks around. So we're gonna start with creating a new task. So down here, I'm gonna just click add new task. I'm gonna give it a name, do the work. And if I just click off from it, it's gonna get added. And if I wanna move it around, I can come over here on the left side and there's gonna be a handle that I can drag this up and down to move it up or down the task list. I can also come in and say, I want this to have a duration and I can say, I want this to be three days. I can also, let's say I wanted to insert something between these. So I can actually go in and uh, come over here to the left side and there's this little dot and I can click the plus and I can insert a task between. So do more work. In addition to the basic information available about a task here, you can also click this ellipsis and you can do a bunch of extra things. So you can make it a subtask. So if I make this a subtask, I can actually have a summary up top and I can have a second level summary task. So now that I've got a couple different things, I'm actually gonna bring this back. So I'm gonna promote it. So now that I've got a couple tasks in here, what if I want to look at when this starts? So when I look up here, you can see this says September 29th to October 19th. This is 
when this project is starting. And if I click here, it's gonna immediately open up the project details and I can manage that and set when this project will start and when it will finish. So I'm gonna say, in currently it says the 29th today when I created the project, I'm gonna have this start, let's say we're gonna start in two weeks. So I'm gonna start on the 10th and it automatically finished, uh, changed the finish date because again, it knows how long all these tasks are gonna take. So the next thing I want to do is I want to look at, you know, how these are related and what this what this looks like from a task perspective. So how does it lay out over those couple weeks that this is going to happen? So I can come to the timeline, and this is going to show me the current date. So that's what shows here, and then it's also going to show me how these tasks are related. And as you can see, we've got you know create the project, customize the buckets, add new tasks. And then we've got a couple gaps here, if you can see that. And then we've got some more tasks, right? Additional, et cetera. And so what's going on here is these tasks were never really scheduled, the ones that the do the work and do more work. So if I come back here, I'm going to go to these and I'm going to add days again. So I'm going to do two days. And now if I go back to timeline, they're here and you can see them, but they're not, in, they're not related to anything else. So to fix that, I can actually go to the, any one of these tasks, click on this little dot and it connect it. It automatically connects it to the task that it would come after. So I'm gonna make this one come after my, that task and I'm gonna change this one to come after this one. Now that I have my tasks with dependencies, I have an extra dependency here. To remove that, I can simply click on this task, scroll down to the dependencies, and remove this dependency. And now it's updated how I want. So I've got my project, I've added some tasks, I've made them work in my timeline. What if I wanna look at it like I've do in Planner, up here on the top, I can select board and I can manage these tasks very much like I do in Planner and I can actually drag them and drop them between these buckets. So I can take the do more work and put it to in progress because we're working on it or I can put it as blocked. Um, I can click on this and I'm gonna open it up in a very similar window to be able to see the details of my task. Um, and again, if I wanted to add dependencies, do anything I wanted, I could do that in the screen. The one other view that project for the web has is charts. So charts is a very, very basic way of looking at tasks by status or by bucket. There's not much you can edit, but you at least have the ability to look at the status of your tasks by bucket or by the person. So some basic functionality and it's all configured for you right away. So we've gone through a couple different ways to view data. Now let's talk about I wanna actually use this for a project. So one of the first things you're gonna to wanna to do is assign these tasks to someone. So again, if I come back to the grid view, I can go and click on this assign to and assign it to a person. But if you notice, right now, the only person I can assign it to is Matt Dressel, right? That's not everybody I wanna assign it to. So to, in order to be able to add other people outside of yourself, to your project, you're gonna to have to click on this group members option. And when you do this, you're gonna see some interesting terminology. It's not like you can just share this with one other person or you know, share it with you know, five people in your team. Projects must be related to a group or team in order for you to share it with other people. This is also how you'll be able to give them access to be able to update those tasks. So. When you come up here, you can choose an existing group. So that would be add to group and you would select the group or you can create a brand new group. So in my case, I already have a group that I wanna use, so I'm gonna select it. And now when I click this, I'm gonna see that I have a couple different options and I'm gonna select bright bulb, a test user we have. And on the other one, I'm gonna say, I wanna assign this to someone who's not in this group and we'll see what happens. So in this case, when I select Mitch, 
Mitch isn't in my group. And I get a couple of options. I can choose to just assign it. So what that's going to do is assign Mitch that task, but then Mitch is going to have no access to actually update that task or see what's going on with that task. My other option is assign and add. If I select this option, that user is going to be automatically added to the group or team that's associated with this project. That's really important. You're not just giving them access to this project, you're giving them access to this group or team. That means they would have access to team chats and channels. It means they'll have access to, if, let's say you had a planner associated with this, they're gonna have access to the SharePoint site, all of the resources that are associated with that group or team, that user will now have access to those things as well. In my case, I'm just gonna cancel out. I don't wanna add them to my group and I really don't wanna assign them to this task. So now that I've assigned it to this user, I also wanna do, we've got, they've got a duration, but what if I wanna understand how long this might take? So I'm gonna actually go in and look at the details of this. And you're gonna see down at the bottom that you've got an effort identified here. So you can do some things to help people understand the amount of effort that, they're, that we're expecting them to uh, incur. So I can go and update this and say, I can say this is gonna take 12, uh, it should take you 12 hours over the course of two days, right? And that's gonna help communicate to the user who's doing this how much work we expect that to be. So I just updated the remaining hours you might ask, can I do a bunch of reporting to determine someone's capacity and whether or not I've gone over that capacity? Remember, this tool isn't for resource management. It's not gonna provide you the level of detail you're gonna need in order to do that type of thing out of the box. Could you build something custom on top of the data that's in here? Maybe, but it's not meant for that. If you're looking for that, you would need to go to Project Online or Project Desktop. So at this point, we've got some basic understanding of tasks. We've got some tasks out there. I'm gonna go open up the, a perspective that is the user that I just assigned this task to and see what they see. Now I'm logged in as the user that I just assigned the task to and they don't have a project for the web license. But if they go to the waffle, they're also gonna see projects. So they can get to the dashboard too. In their dashboard, it'll show that they can create a new project, but this is just Microsoft's way of trying to sell more licenses. When they click project and tr create blank project, you'll see no license, and then they'll think that they need to ask for one. Down below, you'll see recent, shared with me, created by me, and in this case, if they click shared with me, you're gonna see two projects. One is the recent one that I was playing around with before, and the top one is gonna be the new one that I just created. So as you can see, they can come in and now they can see the tasks that they're working on. By doing this checkbox right at the end, they can say, I finished this task, super simple. They can also view the details of the task, enter a percentage complete, so maybe they're not done, but maybe they're 50% done, right? That's gonna update the completed and the remaining hours, and it will also show in the board view or in the timeline view, how much this user has completed of their task. Without any additional licenses, users can go in and actually provide feedback and interact with you. What they can't do, if you noticed, if I wanted to go update someone else's tasks, I can't do that. I can't mark them complete. I can't change the com percentage complete. I can view the information about it, but that's all I can do. In addition, I can't create new tasks, I can't move tasks around. So any of the editing features of a task besides marking it complete or the percentage complete that it is, a user can't do unless they have a full license of project for the web. So far, we've been just using the web to access this data. What if I wanted to bring that data into Teams? That's something that Microsoft thought of, obviously. They're trying to sell more of that too. And they already have a way to bring a dedicated app into Teams. So we're in Teams and I've got this particular team open. And if I wanna go add that project, I can click up here to add a tab. I can search for project. Select the project icon. And now it's gonna allow me to select a project to include in this team. 
And what that's going to do for me is it's going to add a brand new tab. And when someone clicks on the tab, anyone in this team will be able to open it up and look at what's going on in that project. So they can right from here, check the box to complete a task or view what's going on within that project. One thing to note here is that Teams, in this case, it's logged in as me. So I have access to all of these tasks. Whoever is logged in, the permissions will be based on who's logged in. And if I'm the bright bulb user, I would only have access to the one task that's assigned to me. While we're in Teams, you might be curious if this integrates with tasks by planner, this little icon down here. It does not. If you click on this and look at the tasks listed here, no matter what options you select, you'll never see the tasks from Project for the Web. It's a separate application and there currently is no integration. Microsoft, if you're listening, it'd be great to integrate those in so we have one place that we can go to and find all our tasks and everything that we need to be working on uh, across all of these tools that you've built. Now that you've seen some different ways you can view the data, you might be wondering how people might get notified about new tasks or what integrations with email notifications or push notifications there are. The answer is it's pretty light. In this case, as you can see, I'm logged in as the user I signed the task to. I do get a notification that the task was assigned to you, but that's kind of it, right? Um, there are a couple other scenarios that will send out notifications, but it's really uh, uh, light in the amount of notifications that it sends out. If you want to do something, you're really left to do something custom with Power Automate that integrates with the data in Dataverse to go send out a notif notification on your own. Okay, that covers all the major features and components of Project for the Web that I'm going to cover today. Let's talk a little bit about where I think it fits. Project for the Web is really great for scenarios where you need to step up your game in project management. So if you've been using for Planner and Lists, to do some basic project management, but you really are missing dependency management or effort management, basic effort management, tracking how many hours you think it's going to take to complete a task um, or how many days it's going to take you to complete a task, not just when the task is going to be complete. Project for the Web is a great next step. Yes, there's a license cost for the people who are going to be managing the projects, um, but there's not for anybody who's going to be making changes to status of tasks. And it's really pretty great, honestly. Um, I think it is a good stepping stone for someone who is looking for just a little bit more. So if you're somebody who's using Project Online or Project Desktop, you might look at this and say, hey, I'm going to miss some features I'm, I like. I would tell you that you're also going to gain a lot of interaction with users. This is much more integrated with their regular experience. And I think you're going to find that, um, especially with Project Desktop, it'll be a great benefit even if you have to just deal with some of the limitations on this tool. Project Desktop, the real problem with Project Desktop is a desktop app. Like, it's like access. Like, there's just nothing you can do. Project Online is crazy expensive and, like, has great features, but it's crazy expensive, right? Like, this is, this is, this is, this is, like, cheap, so it's, like, it's good. Um, the real question is, do you need critical path analysis? Do you need financial assessment, right? Like if you really do, you ought to probably pay for Project Online. Like that's what you really should do. So that wraps it up for today. If you have any comments or questions, leave them down below. I'd love to hear from you and I will see you in the next video.